What's up guys, Robbie Rays here, gonna give you a quick first impressions at this skill tree and what I predict, you know, the useful stuff will be at max level. Again, full build and gameplay on gold coming in soon, just gotta rank her up. But these are my predictions for the meantime. Getting into Sticky Grenade, um, actually we're gonna start with Tactical Cloak, I'm not sure why that's not at the top. Um, we're looking at 15 second recharge time, guys. So that's that's up there. Duration 6.5. You don't really care about the duration as much because you know you only get the damage boot. It's gone. The duration is done after you shoot. You're gone or use of power. 50% um, gun damage, power damage 50% at base. So you know that's pretty goddamn good, guys. Without you putting any points, spending any money, you're already getting that. Recharge speed versus this. Um, to me, gun damage is looking better than recharge. Still, recharge. I don't know. I mean. 40%, 50%, that's like, my mouth waters when I see that. And while getting it all faster will help, it's not like a big recharge speed boost. It's only 30%. Maybe if it was 40 and 50% gun damage and power damage versus 50% recharge speed, then this would be more of a competition. Uh, movement speed while cloaked versus duration. Again, duration, who really gives a shit? You know, it's, it's the main point of this is to use it, get the damage boost, and then use it again. So... Movement speed while cloaked, I mean, that's probably looking better at this point. And movement speed is survivability in itself. Think about it like that. Getting out of shitty situations. Uh, cloak duration after attack. Okay, yeah, so, I mean, this is good for survivability. This is really good, actually. This is looking better to me. Cloak duration after attack. I mean, two more seconds of these damage buffs is big, guys. Um, may kind of depend on your gun, how many shots you can get off in a short period of time, but to me, this looks really good. And remember, you got this inherently without picking any evolution. Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, all Tiger Cloaks just did this. You got the damage boost lasted for two to three seconds after you used your cloak. So, I mean, broke your cloak. So yeah, Sticky Grenade, to be honest, I've read over these a little bit and they're all really good, but to me, Incinerate is looking like the weakest amongst all of these options here. It is. Because this is like an ungodly amount of damage. 1,100 and a 4 meter radius. In Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, you will remember, the radius of stickies was piss poor, but they did a shitload of damage. This is only 100 points more than the Human Soldier's Frag Grenade in this game. But its radius is 4 meters. So, you know, and why? Because this guy is tactical cloaking. So take this number and multiply it by a goddamn shitload, and that's what it's actually going to be doing. Okay, so taking a look at here. Uh, you know, you get one at base. Now you get two. One more damage. Um, I'm going to go for radius on this probably, guys. I, th I think it's already doing an insane amount of damage. I'd rather spread that paint to as many people as possible. Damage is good, but it's only 20%. It's already doing a shitload of damage. Um, power cells having more versus damage per second. In Mass Effect 3, people really like this damage per second on their grenades once they got the grenade capacity gear. Because then, obviously, you don't need this as much and in this game there it looks like there is a grenade capacity gear so you know keep that in mind uh armor or shields i'd probably go armor it's the biggest bars in this game shields aren't gonna last pretty much through this massive damage it's already doing so the biggest target armor in the game biggest bars in the game is the bosses with the big armor so i mean I, i'd recommend this and as an infiltrator guys it is kind of your job while you are a minion slayer no one's going to be able to match your DPS, so you kind of should be really manhandling bosses. Getting into Incinerate. Um, Infiltrator has kind of always been the best characters in this franchise. They just, they just get a lot of love from the devs. So, yeah, godly damage. Incinerate, again, at base, it is a primer. Okay, it primes him for a fire explosion. And... 120 initial damage, damage per second 50 over 6 seconds, so you're looking at, you know, 300 more damage. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's basically a concussive shot's worth of damage um, that takes more time to happen, and in addition, it's going to do 50% more versus armor, and you got 12 second wait time. Um... 2 meter radius versus damage over time. We'll get into this later, but I'm thinking it really obviously depends on how you spec, but the radius is nice, but 
more often than not, since that's such a small radius, you will just be hitting one person. Damage over time, and that's not even a big buff. So, uh, you know, armor versus initial damage, definitely armor in my opinion. Um, while it already is doing 50% versus armor, again, armor is the biggest bars in the game. You do have your gun to compensate, you know, against shields and everything like that. So, yeah, armor's looking good, as it did in the past game. Um, incinerates initial attack, now triggers combo detonation. So this is this is a priming power inherently, and now you can make it a triggering power, can detonate for you. But, I don't know, guys. I mean, because I read this, and it's like you get two of them. And then it's like, here, if you get radius, there's a chance you may sometimes hit more than one person. Here it's guaranteed you're going to hit two people, but only two people. So, if, and if you're using any kind of ammo type, this is obviously really good, but maybe if you're using a gun that you're just kind of trying to kill the enemies with in one shot, then you're not going to have time to combo any. Maybe against the boss, but, you know. Up in the air at this point, to me, honestly, right now it's looking like I may only keep a point in this and really buff this up and buff this up. Sticky Green Tactical Cloak, because they are monstrous powers, obviously. But let's see, because, you know, sometimes... As we get better, we'll be able to say, like, hey, maybe I'll forego some fitness like we did in past Mass Effect games. It's always been that, you know, the infiltrators, we like to forego fitness and just kind of get the damage going as high as possible and give us as many tools as possible. But she has no way to kind of have some survivability as far as getting health and shields back. Obviously, Tactical Cloak is great because they can't fucking see you, so you can run away and shit. But there's no real way to get your health and shield back with this chick. A lot of these characters have had some kind of method to get a little bit of health and shields. Munitions, tra okay, yeah. Munitions training, um, weapon damage versus power damage. Again, it's going to depend. Do you want to be nading and incinerating more? Or do you want to be gunning more? And to me, uh, honestly, gun is looking better because the grenade's already on steroids. Gun, and uh, so is the gun, but, you know, we don't really have good guns yet, too. That's the other thing you got to remember. Even though snipers throughout Mass Effect history have always... The starting snipers are always like some of the best guns in the game. and They just get better and better. Snipers get a lot of love in this game, guys. So, and it seems to be the case in this game, too. So, you know. Um, gun damage boost versus this. Don't get this, guys. This doesn't look that good. Weapon reload speed, weapon clip size, uh, spare ammo. I mean, do you really care what the goddamn clip size is? You're only getting your damage boost for such a short period of time. You'd rather inflict more damage in that short window of opportunity. Defense debuff for shot. Again, this is really going to depend on the gun you pick. If you pick like a particle rifle from Mass Effect 3, this is better because you're going to get that debuff like almost instantly. But if you're using a slow firing gun, it's going to take you forever to get that debuff. In which case, you know, your tactical cloak damage boost is already gone. So this might be better in that case. Um, yeah. Fitness. Again, if we get ballsy, we may spec highly out of this, but. It's nice to get pick up a little bit of health and shields here, I'd say. And um, this depends on your play style 100%. Are you getting cover more? Or are you on the go more and running and gunning? If you're running and gunning, this is much better. And this seems a lot more fun to me than using this, sitting in cover. So play style choice completely. Low health damage resistance, melee bonus per hit. Obviously, I'd pick that if I went for this. This is nice because you won't have your shield laws and infiltrator. So to get your shield, you know, to get the damage resistance, that's great. But might be something to skip, actually. Let's say we'll we'll see. We'll see. So yeah, initial analysis, it's looking like Incinerate's the weakest link here. Not saying it's a bad power, it looks damn good, but compared to Sticky Green and Tactical Cloak, just my first impression, I'm thinking, you know, that may be the way to build this chick. Anyway, you slice it, damn good character, infiltrators always are. So let's see how the final build ends up. And you guys let me know. Did I miss anything? Did you know something I don't know? Let's figure out the optimal build together and when it's level 20, I'll give it to you guys, and we will absolutely destroy with this character, as the Infiltrator always has. All right, guys, have a great day. Be sure to write, like, comment, subscribe if you did enjoy this, and I will see you.